Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to Inganarius Cuborum. Last time, I went to the Nether and started work on my Blaze Farm. This episode, I'm going to go ahead and finish it off. But in order to do that, I need to get some wiring, and I need, and specifically, I'm going to need a little bit of the stone jacketed wire, which is a ring of stone covers around a red aloe ingot, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn the rest of my red alloy ingots into red alloy wires because I get the feeling I'm going to need a lot of those. Alright, so now to head to the nether. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and head upstairs here. Make my way into this chamber. Over here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set my timer... Here, I think, will work. Alright. There we go. Alright. Uh-oh. It looks like I might be missing something there. So I'm... Probably going to go ahead and just disconnect that like so. Alright. Now I'll make my way around over here. Alright. Now I'm going to make my first use of the stone jacketed wire. Alright. And I'm going to go ahead and put uh, some more of this wire underneath all of this here the pistons on this tier. Oh, I never reoriented those, did I? Irk. Well, thankfully those three are the only ones I haven't reoriented. And there's something else I need to craft anyway while I'm in the overworld. Hopefully I have the resources to craft this. Alright? And if memory serves me right, what I need to craft is, I want to say the state cell here? Yeah. Okay, so the silicon ship is a red doped wafer and three uh, stone wafers. I hope I have a red doped wafer left. I should. There we go. I have four left. That works for me. So now I'm going to go ahead and craft myself some silicon ships. Alright, I need a stone pointer and a cathode. Alright. So there's my pointer and the cathode. And then it requires an anode and two wires. I have the anode. So now I just need the two wires. Alright. And now I should be able to put all of this up in here. The pointer there. The silicon chip there, anode, another wafer in the bottom right, the cathode in the top right, and I get a state cell. Go ahead and put the silicon chips back up. All right. And, all right, I think the screwdriver there, and do I happen to have a spare lever? I'd like to think I do, but it appears I do not. All right. Well, it's easy enough, though. I've got a stick. Just grab a piece of cobblestone, et voila, I have a lever. Back to the nether. And excuse me if I sound a little stuffy. Uh, one of my nostrils is a bit on the stuffy side. The other, somehow not so much. Alright, I'm actually going to go ahead and check. Yeah, all of those are oriented the right way. All of those are oriented the right way. All of those are oriented the right way. And all of those are oriented the right way. Alright. So now what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and uh, lay that out like so. Alright. Yeah, let me think here. Yeah, alright. Yeah, let me make sure I get my wire on the bottom of that. Alright. So now all of these will be connected. Um, I have 
have to admit, I'm not a hundred percent sure about this. No, that's not the direction that needs to go. Okay. All right. Let me slow that down a lot. There we go. Now, let me check the state of this in here. Yeah. That cleaned it up quite nicely. Now it's about to all go out. And it's all back. Which is actually not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and expand that to three seconds. Hmm. Or are those not connected? Oh, they aren't connected. All right. So the next time around. Yep. Et voila. All right. Now I'll just go ahead and put, let me think here. All right. And I should still output, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the timer off. The state cell is off at this point. So let's see here. All right. Yeah. I do have to jump a bit to place the wiring. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, no, wait, no, those don't connect that way, do they? No, they, it appears they do not. All right. But that's actually all right by me. Um, now, one thing I could do is just start cleaning up this bottom area here. Uh, partly to make it look a little bit nicer, and mostly to ensure that uh, blazes don't spawn out here. Um, let's see here. All right, one, two. There we go. That's three, four. All right. Now, let me think. I should be able to reach all the way over there. Make my way up to there. All right. Yeah, and really, at this point, Yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah. That's how that's going to work. All right. And now the wires here, I just go ahead and wrap around like so. And then these wires here, I can go ahead and wrap these around like so. There we go. Um, let me think here. All right. Let's see here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and wrap that around. There we go. Jump and place. Yeah. That doesn't look too bad. All right. Now just pull her up a little bit over here. Yeah. And then again in the cor near the corner. All right. And now as a quick little check on this, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on 
run over here. Give it a second. Okay. Interesting. Another quick check. All right. I don't think the top row is working quite right. Actually, that could well explain why. Yeah, something like that there. To connect that. Yeah. And now to see if this side is connected up correctly. And it would seem to be. All right. So another quick check here. Yep, I'm inclined to say it is working at this point. So uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and seal that off. Um, yeah. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead go off camera here for a little bit because I want to make sure that this is all sealed in so that I don't have uh, uh, blazes spawning in this room. I shall return. All right. Back in the overworld. Just a couple more things to sort out. Uh, first off, if I put two obsidian next to each other, in a crafting table, I get this obsidian pressure plate. Uh, the main advantage of that is obsidian pressure plate, and I forget which mod it is that actually adds it, but that obsidian pressure plate will only activate if a player is standing on it. That's kind of important for my purposes. All right, I've also gone ahead and crafted myself an iron door. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a quick hop into the nether. All right, put one obsidian pressure plate there. The other on the other side of the door. Put the iron door down between them. Et voila! The half slabs on the floor should prevent any mobs from spawning in here. Uh, you'll also note that I did grab some uh, stone brick stairs here. And that's just to make that part of the ceiling look a little bit nicer. Alright. Now that's the second to last thing I need to do. What's the last thing? Unfortunately, it's also the scariest part of this job. Because what I need to do here, let me think. I'm going to put my lever there. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and go like so. All right. Let me see if I can take care of that. All right. Now I need to put my red alloy wire here. All right. There we go. And now if I go inside here. Flip that lever, and all three of those pistons are extended, which is, in fact, exactly what I want. Now, I did put down this cobblestone pad for the sake of safety. I can actually get rid of it now. Well, most of it, anyway. The two blocks I just put uh, that on, I will still need to have cobblestone on. All right. Now, let me think here. I'm going to have to bank on really this being inaccessible in order to get a modicum of safety. Um, that said, what I can do, start there and put stone bricks along here to seal that off. Yeah. Now, part of me is wondering if I shouldn't replace one of these with glass. 
That's going to give me a simple verification there if I at least do that. Excellent. Open. Closed. Open. Closed. Um. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm going to see if I can't bring uh, some sort of glass down here. I just have to decide what kind of glass I want. Because I think I have two options easily available to me. Three, actually. I have this glass viewer. I have the hardened glass, and I have the regular glass. I'm somewhat inclined towards the glass viewer. So go ahead into the nether, place down my glass viewers, let's see here, thankfully breaking a glass viewer will give me the glass viewer back, um, I suspect, which one got it, there it is, okay, there we go. That should work. Uh, I don't expect to get aggroed. I don't believe they can aggro me through there. I can still hit their legs. Yeah, this should work. Uh, unfortunately, I left my swords and whatnot at my other mob farm in the overworld. So, I'm going to go ahead and run back to the overworld, grab those, come back, uh, turn on mobs, and... Yeah. With any luck, I should have a decent uh, number of blaze spawns coming in. Also, I went ahead and uh, crafted myself a few more soul shards. I have one for slimes. I have one for skeletons. I have one for cows. I'm going to want one for the uh, blazes so I can build a blaze farm outside the nether. But, like I said, I'm going to go grab my swords and armor, maybe craft more swords and armor if I feel the need to do so, uh, and then I will return. Alright, well I've got everything I need for a good hunt, some steak, some swords, some armor, my empty soul shard. Now, I just need to turn on the mods. Yeah, my minimap is showing a lot of mobs outside. Aha! We are starting to get some mobs in our mob trap. So I can at least kill this one. There we go. Alright. Well, at least it turned it into a blaze spawner. Which is good. I'm seeing a lot of blazes, which makes me wonder if I don't have a blaze spawner elsewhere. Ooh. But this one's also spawning blazes, which is not too bad. <clears throat> Alright. There we go. All right. Now, any second now, we should get stuff. All right. So it looks like I'm going to get minium shards in that barrel, and my blaze rods are going to go into that barrel. Why don't I go ahead and open that back up? All right. Yeah, and then close it off again. Excellent. All right, as you can see, now I have a blaze rod. I'm probably just going to let this uh, blaze farm keep going for a bit. Uh, once I have a good supply of blaze rods and probably have run out of uh, swords, I will return. All right, I am back from the uh, nether. I've, I mean, I've brought a stack of blaze rods with me. I've still got a couple stacks in a barrel in the nether. I won't need them uh, quite yet. 
Um, there is something else I need to do, however. Uh, you can just barely see my uh, lava tank down there. It is very, very nearly empty. Uh, also, I did have to partially dismantle it, I think, to, uh, uh, yeah, I may have to do something about that. But anyway, um, rather than move the uh, tank that's uh, near all the lava and whatnot, I'm going to have to come up with another way of getting that lava into the tank. I'm going to do that with some of this hardened glass. It's been more than a few episodes since I've crafted this, as well as two copper ingots on the sides, and that gives me liquid ducts. More than a few liquid ducts. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and head downstairs. I'd say real quickly here, but uh, it is still a... I would... I want to say it's around 15 seconds uh, to get all the way to sea level. And here we are. Sea level. Now I just make my way all the way over past the tree farm. Yeah, I know, I was just crossing the bridge, as I said, past the tree farm. Now I'm past the tree farm, around this le around the oasis, and over to here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and destroy this relay. I don't have any use for it anymore. Let me see here. How hot is this running? It is off. All right, well, that's fine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this relay back up here uh, to reconnect this system. Uh, now I just need to head downstairs. Yeah, it, it's going to be a little bit of a ways down simply because uh, I haven't built any sort of... Uh, railway or other high efficiency method for getting down here. Fortunately, I don't have to go from here all the way into that basin. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that torch. There's another torch over here that I need to get rid of. Now that all the lava is gone underneath this, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my so engines, get rid of the pump that was here. Yeah. All right. Now I should be able to make my way around here. There we go. So I've got all four of my engines. And a little bit of cobblestone. Uh, I could always collect more from the environs if I feel it appropriate to do so. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit of a glitch with my mouse, where sometimes it just randomly registers such a big jump in movement. I know one of these days it's going to screw me a lot worse than it has already, but uh, for now it's a non-issue. Alright, anyway, uh, this pump now goes here. You can see it's already starting to make its way down. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the liquid ducts on top there. Yeah. Go ahead and put redstone engines there and there. Erk. Okay, that was not at all what I wanted. Yeah. All right. But at any rate, I can at least uh, get that sorted out. So let's see here. That engine goes there. That engine goes there. Now, before I actually uh, turn that on, I need to make sure that I can get my uh, lava from here all the way up to my tank. All right. I'm good here. 
Um, let me think. Can I get rid of that? Oh, yeah. Easily. All right. Let's see. If I go up further... Yeah, let's see. Let me get rid of that. All right. And now take these liquiducts on over like so. Now, let me think here. All right. Yeah, I think this will do. And I want to make sure I'm directly underneath that. All right. There we go. And now if that works, I should be able to get lava all the way from that pump there up into this multi-tank here. And then it's got some buckets in reserve so that it can start sending lava back upstairs again. All right. So now all that's left is to test to make sure that this slightly modified lava extraction system works. And really, it's pretty simple. Torch here. Torch there. And before too much longer, we should hopefully get lava coming out of here. There we go. Nice. All right. Now I just need to verify that it's all making its way up to the tank that's down here. And I know I maybe could have moved that tank, but uh, not yet. Um, kind of not really all that super important at this point. Well, it is a telling sign that it has sent all of its buckets off. I will take that as a good sign. Now, with any luck, that should mean that once I get upstairs, because I reckon the buckets will beat me upstairs, and what I expect to see is about three buckets of lava in the lava tank upstairs. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm expecting to see. Three lava buckets in the tank. A little bit over the hill here. Oh. Oh, I forgot something. I actually forgot something kind of important. That. I forgot to reset the direction of that. Ah, and now it's sending the buckets back downstairs. But it does have four buckets. I guess I had one left from the uh, last lake I extracted. Um... Now, there is one more thing I can do here. Now, that powered furnace, I know I do need to try to finish off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that engine on. Uh, I'm also going to turn this engine. Yeah, there's no point turning that on because it has no lava. So at this point, it actually makes more sense uh, really to just delete this engine at this point. All right, go ahead and get rid of everything in the pulverizer. Because I'm going to have to move this entire setup, unfortunately. One block forward, I think. Anyway, let's see here. So let me go ahead and craft myself a quartet of stone bricks. There we go. All right. Yeah. 
And for something like that, that should work pretty well. All right. So I will go ahead and let this furnace continue smelting. Uh, hopefully it's got almost exactly enough fuel for its job. <sighs> but next episode, I will return and hopefully start making some steel. Until then, see you next time, everybody.